This is... This is not a natural death. It's murder! It's murder, most foul. Helena was taken by no corporeal malady. She was... Murdered! Dun dun dun! An audible gasp circulated the room. Murder, madam? But how? She's not hurt. There's no blood. I don't see anything that suggests a murder. But I do. What do you see, madam? When I first came to check on Helena, I didn't see anything either. In fact, she looked so natural, I thought she might be sleeping. Of course, I had noticed her eyes open and the strange way she was laying. So you realize that she must be dead. At that moment, I nodded at Dorian and went over to Helena and pushed back some of her hair on her forehead. Oh, it's the hair on her forehead, not the hair on the back of her neck. Okay, so something on her forehead. Oh, I didn't see that before. I, too, almost missed it. She had a slight whelp on her forehead, suggesting she was hit on the head. It's small and hardly there, but she's small, and I'd imagine that even a slight knock on the head could really hurt her, or... Or kill her. But, oh, murder's so, so frightening! Is it possible she somehow tripped, hit her head on the piece of furniture, and stumbled on the bed? I suppose it's possible, but there isn't there really isn't any way to prove that theory. Some of the most mysterious murders are committed by poison. Violet's interjection was so sudden we all turned to look at him. And poison is often considered to be the weapon of choice of women. Charlotta took a quick step forward to Violet. Who are you accusing, Lord Violet? No one. I'm simply presenting a different theory as to what could have happened. I think, perhaps, that we should exit this room immediately. There's nothing left to be learned here. At least not at this moment. This room is dark. Not just dark to the eyes, but to the soul. As soon as I entered this house, I could feel the evil that permeated its walls. I can't stand being in this room any longer. I beg you all. Let us leave it immediately. Yes, madame, I do agree with you. I will have a cold dinner prepared for us in the dining room presently, if it pleases everyone. Yeah, found a dead body? Let's go have some dinner. Yum, yum, yum. I, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. To be honest, nobody was hungry. Seriously. Seriously, Charlotta. Who is hungry for food after finding a dead body? Let's solve the murder mystery. There isn't a single person on Earth, I suspect, who can see a dead body and, and, that, and then have an appetite for cold cuts. There's something about seeing a fellow human knocked low by death that reminds you of your own mortality. And it's a startling reminder. We each looked from one to another as we picked at the dinner that Charlotte had set before us. A cold ham and turkey, along with vegetables and fruit salad. It was a nice effort on her part, and I tried to eat in order to show her that I appreciated it, but even she hadn't taken a single bite of the meal. For most of the meal, we were all silent in our own contemplations. We went on like this for some time, until suddenly Lord Violet said the one thing none of us wanted to say. So, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. I'm sure we're all thinking it anyway. But at this table sits a murderer. Oh! We all know it. There's no one else in this house. It had to be one of us. There's no other way to look at it. Someone was out to kill the mistress of this house. I didn't know this Helena personally, and I'm sad to say that now I never will, but no one deserves to be murdered in their own home. And as I have just moved into the neighborhood myself, I don't quite like the idea of a murderer lurking about. Who's to say you're not the murderer, Lord Violet? Yes, and who put you in charge anyway? We barely know who you are! I assure you, I do not wish to be in charge. I simply found the need to start a conversation that will hopefully lead us all to the truth. And justice for the deceased. Everybody looks angry, everybody is furious right now, and meanwhile Lady, Lady Strawberry is just kind of hiding in the back eating strawberries. So, how do we begin? I suppose that it would help if anyone saw anything strange happening around the chateau recently. Did anything out of the ordinary happen? 
You mean besides the untimely death of Lord Montague? Ah, uh, yes, I did hear something about that in town the other day. How very unfortunate. We shall have to keep that in mind. Ooh, what if the murders are related? Ooh, it could have something to do with the murder. But, I mean, besides that. Here, I was faced with a choice. Everybody ran away. I noticed something strange yesterday that involved Madame Esme, but to be frank, her powers frightened me a little. I decided I should... Ooh, should I accuse her, or just... I'm gonna be nice, because I'm a little scared of her. Well, even though today was the first time I've personally met Madame Esme, as I've... I realized I heard her voice before. Yesterday afternoon, I heard a knock at the door. I was in the parlor, so when Helena called out from the hall that she'd see to the door, I didn't get up. It's Helena's house, not my business. I heard two voices, Helena and the stranger. It wasn't until just now I realized I know who that stranger's voice was. It's Madame Esme, here yesterday, visiting Helena. She went inside with Helena, and they must have departed to another portion of the house, because I couldn't hear their voices anymore. When they emerged about half an hour later, they were fighting with their voices in an argument. When I found Helena later, she was a bit agitated, but seemed mostly back to normal. I asked her if anything was the matter, but she wouldn't say, and she simply brushed me off. Oh, well, now that I know what the fight is about, I kind of want to go back and just start accusing Esme. So I was wondering, Esme, do you have any information? What happened yesterday? Well... Normally, I wouldn't even answer such a question since it's my own private business, but seeing that Helena's died, I will speak. I do not wish to bring suspicion upon myself. Yes, it's true. The voice you heard yesterday was mine. I'd come to the chateau, as I often do, to tell Helena's fortune. I've been coming for a while, ever since I realized she was interested in my arts. I gave her her fortune, but she was not pleased with it. I told her there was a dreadful danger coming upon her household. She argued that losing her father was the most dreadful thing she could think of, so surely nothing worse could come upon her. I didn't say so then, but she didn't realize her own life was in danger. And to be completely honest, I didn't think that the danger would lead to her own death. But things got heated as I tried to talk some sense to her, telling her to be aware of her surroundings and those closest to her. She wouldn't listen, so I took my leave of the mansion. I wouldn't even have come back today if I hadn't gotten caught on the Montague side of the river and become stranded when the rain came. Yet even with my prediction, I never expected to find Helena as we found her tonight. So, you weren't angry at Helena and seeking revenge for something she said to you? No, of course not. Helena was a regular customer and had become a friend to me as well. Even if she didn't like one of my readings, it certainly didn't mean that I killed her. I wouldn't be the first time a client didn't like what was in his or her future. I'm just merely the messenger. I never take it personally. So, you never take it personally? Why did you raise your voice? Well... Okay, maybe I did take it a little personally. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. She's always trusted me before, so I was injured that she suddenly didn't believe me. She's telling me to get out of the house, and I didn't appreciate such treatment, so I may have raised my voice a little. But I assure you, it had nothing to do with Helena's demise today. Thank you for explaining it so f explaining it so fully, madame. I think I need to sit down now. <laughs> do you have something you'd like to share, miss? I don't see why Lady Strawberry should be the one doing the questioning when she's a relative stranger here. I was shocked at Charlotta's tone. She seemed to notice right away that she'd spoken too harshly and tried to make up for it. What I mean to say is, I know Madame Esme. She's a local to the village like myself. I mean no disrespect, but I'm more likely to believe the word of someone I know and have seen before than someone who I've only just been introduced to. I am not the murderer, okay? I am not the murderer! Do you have a reason to suspect I... I mean... <clears throat> anyone of suspicious activity, Miss Charlotta? Do I have permission to speak freely? In light of the sudden murder, I say any and all information that anyone has to give should be revealed immediately. I agree, that, that is true. Well, in light of that, I suppose I will voice my concerns. I find it strange I've worked here for about two years, and in that time Lady Strawberry has never once come to visit her cousin. 
I've I've been busy. As a child, I practically lived here. But as a grown woman, I, I, I have my obligations. I understand that, but I do find it unusual that you should show up only now. That I show up only now when Helena's requested me? Oh yes, but don't you see? That's the perfect cover! Playing the role of the devoted cousin, come to comfort Helena, yet all the time simply looking to live off her hospitality a little longer. How dare you accuse me of that, mad madam? How dare you? How dare you impugn my honor in such a way? <laughs>